Hey, it's Jeff with YourLearningCareer.com. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a branching scenario role play for your e-learning course. And I'm going to be using iSpring Suite 11. By the way, I would like to thank iSpring for sponsoring this video today. Now, let's jump into it. All right, so I'm here in PowerPoint because this is where I'm building my e-learning course. And then I'm using the iSpring Suite tools to enhance it. And one of the things I wanna do, so as part of sales training, I wanna talk about how to build rapport. But I don't want it to just be a boring, read-only screen. I want this to be interactive. So I'm going to create a role play here to let my learner practice building rapport with a customer. So to get going with my role play, I am simply gonna go up here and I'm going to click on role play. That is going to open up iSpring Talk Master, and I'm gonna go ahead and click on New Role Play. Now, the first thing I'm going to wanna do here in iSpring Talk Master is create a new scene. So I'm gonna click on New Scene, and this is where I'm going to start my scenario. Now, what I wanna do here, I have a, a couple things I need to do. First of all, I wanna pick a character to star in my role play. So I'm gonna to go to images and I'm going to click on choose character here. And I've got several options here and then if I happen to have the um, content library, I can actually add even more options. Uh, but I'm just gonna pick one of these that are here. I'll go with this person and then I'm gonna hit close here. And then I'm also going to pick a background. And once again, I get several options here. I can also add from the content library. And another option here is to have my own custom background. So if I have a picture that I want to upload, I can do that as well. So because this is taking place in a car dealership, I'm going to click on this picture for my background. And I'm going to hit close. And there I am. So now I've got my images selected. Now I'm gonna go back to content. And if I wanted to, I could have this customer say something to start things off. But actually, I want the salesperson to start. So I'm gonna leave her speech blank and I'm gonna go to add replies and I'm going to put the options for my learner to start the conversation with her. All right, so I just added my replies. All I did was click add reply to add each one. And if I wanted to, if you want to just really quick see what it's going to look like, I can, if I hover here, it says preview scene. So if I just click that, you can see what it's going to look like. So that's right now it shows, it indicates here at the top right kind of how she's feeling. So she's happy right now. And then it gives these options of what I'm going to say to her as the salesperson. The other thing I want to point out here in the preview is that you can preview the way it will look on different devices. But let me go ahead and get out of preview because I have some other things I want to do. All right, so now we have our starting scene. Now what I want to do is branch out based on how the person responds. So let's start with what's up. Is what's up a good response to the situation? Probably not. Um, so let's see how we want to uh, handle this. I'm going to go to this link and I'm gonna drag it over to the side or wherever I want to. And that's going to create a new scene. Now what's nice is that same image, the same images will stay with it. We've got our character and our background, great. Now this time I'm going to have her say something because I just came up to her and I said, what's up? What's she gonna do? Well, I think she's gonna be puzzled. Like what, why are you talking to me? This kind of throws her off. She says, huh, nothing. And she's gonna walk away. So this is basically the end of the scenario if they pick that option. And I'm going to add a message and my message is going to say, hey, you did not build rapport. You're gonna to need to try again. In order to let them try again, what I will do is I'm gonna click on the link again. Now, if I wanted to do a new scene, notice how I could 
start a new scene, right? But in this case, I actually want them to go back to this first one. So notice what happens when I put it here. Oh, look at that link to number one. So I'm just going to leave that there. And now if they pick the what's up, that's the reaction they're going to get. And they're going to have to start over again. And if I want to preview that, let me go back to this to preview it. I'll just show you real quick. So I do what's up. Oh, and look at the indicator. She's confused. And my message comes up. And what's nice too is it has this little uh, faded what's up. So it reminds me what I said. And then I can hit continue and it's going to take me back to the beginning. So I get to start over. All right, let's go ahead and do these other two real quick. Follow me. I've got the perfect car. This again is not what we're going for. So this is going to be similar to the one I just did. You didn't even ask me any questions. I think she's going to be actually unhappy this time. And the message is going to be, hey, you need to try again. And once again, I'm going to take the link. I'm going to drag it up to number one because I want to give them the chance to try again. And then finally, we have this one. Welcome to Star Motors. Is there something I can help you with? And this time, we're going to have a new scene where she's going to stay normal. And she's going to say, yes, I'm looking for a car, but I don't know what I want. And now we are going to add some new replies for this to continue the story. Now I've added my replies. I've got, you know, follow me. I've got the perfect one. What do you drive now? And come back when you know what you want. So once again, I'm going to branch these out. And similar to the, the last one, like for example, this one, follow me, I have the perfect car. That's really not what we want to do at this point, right? Cause she only, we don't know anything about the customer. So I'll make a new scenario. She's unhappy, says, no, thanks. You didn't ask any questions or listen. I put in the message, try again. And so just like I did before, I'm going to link this back to here so they can try again. All right, so I went ahead and I added some responses for these other two. So, of course, if, if you said, come back when you know what you want, this would be, you know, she's angry and thanks for nothing. And then, and the correct one, of course, would be, what do you drive now? In which case, it goes here and she's still continuing the conversation. I drive a Camry but want something sportier. And then I can continue to add to this scenario, to this story, you know, however much I want. And then something else I want to show you that's really cool is this voiceover option. If I click on that, you'll see that it has all of my different phrases, you know, who's saying what. Now, I would probably start with her and make her my voiceover because this is the voice of like, this is your learner, right? Saying this. So I'd go to this one and I could either record it or I could bring in my own file. So if I had someone else record it for me, I could import that sound file. I also wanted to just show you how this works um, as far as zooming in and out. So right now I'm using my scroll on my mouse, but you can also use this plus and minus to zoom in and out. And then I'm dragging and moving this. So you get a lot of room to uh, build out your scenario. So you can really, you know, if you've got a, a, a rather lengthy scenario that you want to play out, you can do that. You know, you've got room. So I've got all kinds of room here um, to build out my scenario. Now, once I do have it built out the way I want, I'm going to click on save and return to course. So it's going to be a placeholder here on the slide. Uh, and if I need to edit it, it tells me what to do. It says if I want to edit it, I simply go back into role play and I can make any edits. And now let me just show you what it looks like integrated into the overall course. So I'm going to go to this slide right before and I'm going to click on preview from this slide. All right, so this is the PowerPoint slide. And then you'll see when I click next, 
it goes to my scenario and it just integrates really nice. So it, it's all, you know, it's right there, part of the overall e-learning course. And then if I want, you know, I can go in and make some selections, follow me. Oh, she didn't like that. So I better try again. I'll hit continue. It's gonna let me start over. This time I'll say welcome. That's better. And let's see, I'll ask her, what do you drive now? And she's still happy. So that's how it's going to look in there. And then once you know I was at the end of the scenario, I'd hit next and I would continue into the rest of the content. Now, this is how I would do it if I was creating my course, overall course in PowerPoint and using the other iSpring Suite tools, but I just wanted to show you one other option, and that is if you wanted to build a standalone role play, you can do that as well. And for that, all you're gonna do is go to your iSpring Suite 11 tools, and you can open the iSpring Talkmaster. And from here, you could go in and create a new role play, or if you had an existing role play, you could go into that. And I'll just show you that real quick. So this is the one we were working on. And you'll see that up here, I have publish. So if I wanted to publish this as a standalone activity, I could do that. And I have all of these options. I can publish to my computer as HTML5, or I can put it on my learning management system, or I also have these other options for iSpring Space and iSpring Learn if I have those. This is a great way to add interactivity to your e-learning course, and as you saw, it's very easy to do. Now, something else you might wanna do is add a quiz to your e-learning course, and you can do that with iSpring Suite as well. If you wanna know how, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video next.